Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. Uh, on this video I'm going to talk about solving for one unknown variable whenever we have similar triangle problems. Uh, keep in mind this is part two. I've got a whole bunch of videos uh, on similar triangles on my website. Look under geometry lessons and you'll find these videos. Uh, but what's the purpose of this lesson? It's to f I'm going to show you the steps uh, that I show my students to solve for one unknown variable. Uh, and, and let me read this first statement here. It says triangle JKL is similar to triangle PQR and we need to find X. And so before we jump into finding X, I need to focus on similar. Uh, I automatically know these triangles are similar because the statement tells me they are. And so I know that it, uh, these triangles already have these two characteristics, which are corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. So I don't need to check to see if these guys are similar. I'm telling you that they already are. Uh, and so uh, since we're talking about finding X here, X is a side length. We're trying to figure out what, what side length J or sorry L J is or JL is. Uh, then I'm going to focus on the second characteristic here. Uh, we know that corresponding sides are proportional. And so I'm going to end up setting up a proportion here, plugging in these numbers and the variable X and we'll cross multiply and, and we'll get X. So this is going to be actually a pretty quick process. Uh, so let's work on the let, let's work on this. The first thing you need to do is is you need to figure out the proper way to set up the proportion. Don't just go in here and start plugging in these numbers into this proportion because you might get the wrong answer. I'm going to show you the way to get it right every single time. And so um, what I do is is I always compare small triangle to big triangle. You can do big triangle over small triangle. Uh, do whatever makes you comfortable here. Uh, but this is what I do. Uh, and then when I solve these problems, every number that's on the top of the proportion comes from the small triangle. Everything on the bottom of the proportion comes from the big triangle. Uh, and so the numbers on top from the same triangle, the numbers on the bottom from the other triangle. And then whenever I'm setting it up up and down, I'm always checking, uh, putting in the numbers that correspond to each other. And so if you organize your proportion in this way, uh, you should get your answers right every time. Uh, now this is how I set up my problems. Uh, you need to do what your teacher tells you, but this is what I, sh I show my students. Uh, so uh, moving on here, let's work on this first problem. Uh, triangle JKL is similar to triangle PQR. Again, find X. So again, we're trying to figure out what this guy is right here. Uh, and now I already told you, I always do my small triangle over big triangle. And this is the small triangle here, this is the big triangle. And then I'm going to set up a proportion. Uh, and if I look here, <clears throat> I need to figure out what X is. Uh, huh. How do I know which side corresponds with X? Well, you can look here, and, and this is kind of obvious that these are, are the corresponding sides, uh, but you don't always want to rely on just looks. Sometimes it's not very obvious. I'm going to look at the statement here. This uh, angle J and angle P here correspond to each other, so I know that these angles should be congruent to each other. If I look at K and Q, they both come second. I know that these angles are congruent to each other. And then L and R come third, and so I know that these angles are congruent to each other. And if I look at the angle relationships, I know for sure that opposite K uh, is X, that's the two arcs. Opposite the two arcs of Q gives me 25. And so these angles here uh, guarantee that these sides are going to be corresponding. Again, they're opposite the same number of tick marks. And so since I'm doing small over big, the X is going to go on top because it's small, and the 25 is going to go on the bottom because it's big. Uh, and then so, again, I did corresponding sides here up and down, and then the small triangle was on top, big triangle was on the bottom. And then last one we have here, uh, the 6. The 6 corresponds to the 15 because they both are opposite the three arcs here. And so 6 is small, 15 is big, and now I've set up my proportion. Now cross multiply and we'll solve this real quick. So x times 15 is 15x. Uh, 25 times 6 is what we're going to have here. Well, this is 15x. This is uh, 150. If I divide both of these by 15, I will get x. And this gets me uh, x equals 10. And so I know right now that x is 10. And if you're not quite sure if this is right, you can always plug that number back in for x. And if I cross multiply, 10 times 15 is 150. And then 25 times 6 is 150. And since this balances out, these are equal, then I know this is the right answer. And so not too bad, pretty quick. Uh, one more example, and we'll call it quits on this. Uh, if we look at example 2, it says if triangle VUT is similar to triangle MLK, we need to figure out what x is. Now if we look here, I've added additional numbers for sides, and I've twisted these triangles around. And so this is where we would really need to focus on which angles are similar to each other, looking at this statement. 
If I look, V and M both come first, so angle V and angle M are going to be congruent to each other. U and L come second, so angle U and angle L are going to be congruent to each other. If I look at T and K, those both come third, and so I know these angles are congruent to each other. And now I can figure out which sides correspond to each other. And so I'm still going to set up a proportion here. Uh, I'm still going to do small over big because that's just what I do. Uh, now the small triangle I have uh, is on the right this time, whereas the big is on the left uh, versus the other problem I had it swapped around. Uh, and so now I need to find x. I need to 100% certainty plug x into this equation. If I'm finding x, I need to put that in here. Well, what corresponds with the x? Well, opposite the two arcs and opposite the two arcs. Well, I know 21 does. So x is small, 21 is big, so 21 is going to go on the bottom here. And then it doesn't matter which side I choose here. I'm just going to very just randomly pick 30. And so I'm going to use 30 in this proportion now. And so 30 is opposite the three arcs, and so is 20. And so I'm going to do 30 is on the bottom, because it's the big triangle, 20 is on top. Now, I could have done uh, 18 and 12 in here, and we would still get the same answer. Uh, and so it doesn't really matter. Just pick one of the sides that we have, and then go with it. Uh, and so if I keep going here, and I cross multiply, I have uh, x times 30, and that's 30x, 21 times 20. Well, 30x equals 21 times 20 is 420. That equals 30x. And then if I divide both sides by 30 here, I have x equals, uh, this cancels out here. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing the math here. This is uh, 12, 13, 14. Sorry, I didn't do the math beforehand. And so in this case, x is 14. And so I know that x is 14. Again, if you're not quite sure here, plug in 14 for this x here. 14 times 30 is 420. 21 times 20 is 420. And that's it. Uh, now, if, if you want to stop the video, you're welcome to. Uh, but I'm going to prove to you that you can also have set up this proportion using these other numbers, 18 and 12. So I'm going to do small over big. I'm still going to use this x over 21 first. Uh, but I'm going to plug in these uh, other numbers that I have here. Uh, I'm going to plug in this 18 and, and, tw and 12. So opposite the 18 uh, is this one arc. Opposite this 12 is the one arc. So I know that these two sides correspond to each other. And so 12 is on the small. 18 is on the big, and if I cross multiply here, we have 18 times x, and 21 times 12. And I'm going to get my calculator here, because I, I can't do this math too quickly. And so I have 18x equals 252. And then if I divide both sides by 18 here to get x by itself, uh, what is 252 divided by 18? I get 14. So again, I still got the same answer here. And so as long as you set it up this way, uh, you should be in good shape. So um, with that being said, there you go. Have a good day. Bye-bye.